to this now, the crisis uh, with the country's railway system and the logistical nightmare at the harbours are forcing some companies to make alternative arrangements. Now, in recent weeks, for example, we have been talking about ships, shipping containers that were stuck outside the Durban port and looking at a lot of, uh, you know, the crisis that has been going on in some of the ports in the country, but also the state of rail remaining a concern for various industry players as well. Now, exporters are working around the crisis in order to try and really augment some of the implications there. No doubt this is likely to have some serious implications for the country. Let's speak to Professor Jan Havenha, who is with the University of Stellenbosch Transport Economist. Let me thank you so much, Prof, for your time this afternoon. Let's start with, you know, as you watch this picture unfold with some of the, you know, the, the, the countries in, in the region making alternative means, what could be some of the implications when they are now working around us as you know, a destination that would have been of choice. Thank you very much for the invite. I think there's two issues here that, that one must not completely confuse. Uh, obviously, it is true that people are making alternative arrangements. The thing that the win for us, and if I say us here, I don't mean South Africa, I mean the subcontinent, yeah. is that we always needed better trade routes. We always needed better ways of dealing with our stuff in cases of emergencies, but also for other reasons. If you think about how things were constructed in, in South Africa, in Southern Africa, along colonial terms, we had this huge, big uh, north-south corridor, uh, copper coming all the way from the Congo, places like that coming exported through Durban. That was never correct. Mm. And, and the continent needed the alternatives of uh, Maputo and Walfus Bay being connected. Uh, another beautiful corridor that's arising is in Kala, which is a container port a really nice big container port in the north coast of Mozambique, uh, connecting to the Beto, a beautiful new port uh, uh, just south of Luanda. Uh, we needed those type of things. It's much shorter. It's less border crossings. It's even better for us in terms of less road freight uh, if the railway is not working. So all of those things are not necessarily bad. Yeah. Uh, the, the alternative exists is also not alternatively bad. The, the fact that we live through it here, of terrible logistics crises obviously is bad. But I think there's light in the end of the tunnel there as well. And, and Prof, then what, you know, one would ask, because we always love to hear about the light, what is the light at the end of the tunnel? Because at least that could give us a little bit of hope. It's sometimes, it's sometimes terrible to, to be behind the scenes because I can say two things. 2023 was both the worst year in logistics in South Africa and and for us, for many of us, the best year. And <laughs> why I say it's the best year, if I think of what happened, we know what is the bad things that happened. But if I think about the good things, the president promised us a roadmap in Sona last year. It took us a year to write it uh, and to sell it and to get all the departments and all the tiers of government to buy into it. And you know what? Uh, the cabinet approved it. Now, it took a year, which is too long for a business. And the government shouldn't run businesses. But for a government, it's not bad. It was approved. It talks about major private sector uh, involvement mm. in a very structured way. So there I'm very glad about. The other thing I'm glad about is the president promised us the National Logistics Crisis Committee. It was established and it's beginning to work. Uh, and we had the previous management of Transnet that was really not their hearts went into it. They've now left. And the temporary management that they have currently, uh, people like uh, Michelle Phillips and Russell Baikis, they're working very hard. And, and I spoke to an exporter this morning, a fruit exporter. They're telling me, you know, we have everything was improving for containers, but suddenly there's a drop in Cape Town. I have my own independent numbers. And he says it's refreshing. Uh, the new management of Transnet is getting into the visible leadership, beginning to improve it. So I, that's what I'm hopeful about, mm. is that this new acting leadership, I can tell you that the rail volumes is beginning to improve. The container volumes through Durban improved markedly. It's not perfect yet, but it's much better. So I am hopeful. Uh, I have one major, major threat that I'm seeing coming down the line, and that is the Minister of Public Enterprises now has to announce a new managing a full-time managing director and um, and chief for the railways. Uh, if those are good appointments, I think we can ride on the turnaround that we've achieved probably since a month ago. It's going better since a month ago. So, and, um, 
And, and, and Prof, how critical would that appointment be? Because, you know, we've also seen what has been happening on our roads, the state of our roads, the infrastructure in that particular regard, and also what has been happening on our rails as well. So how critical would that appointment be, particularly in turning around this ship? I'll, I'll shock you with my statement. Maybe, maybe not. And I say if we make a mistake now, uh, we can prepare for civil war. That's where we are. I, I promise you there, there's so much problems. We cannot allow to lose another few hundred billion rand that we've lost in 2022 and that we lost in 2023. We cannot afford 500,000 job losses. We cannot afford any of those things in South Africa. Mm. We'll need to fix our logistics. The effect of our logistics crisis on the economy was just as bad as ESCO. Yeah. You just don't see it as much. Uh, we, this, is, this is one of the most critical decisions ever that Minister Gwilnan needs to make. He needs to appoint two good people. And Prof, then finally, you know, we, we've also seen reports, I'm sure you've seen them as well, around the copper exports. And I mean, uh, copper exports, for example, in some of the reports saying that they arrived in Lobito within eight days compared to the 25 days that it usually takes to be tracked to Durban. One wonders when it comes to this particular sector, how concerned should we be? How big of a business is copper when you're looking at what has been moving around in, 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 in this particular route? Um. I'm extremely glad about it. Uh, number one, it was 2% of Durban's exports. It's more or less nothing. Number two, it creates more capacity in Durban. We don't really need it. It's not additional, uh, uh, additional beneficiation created for our country. Number three, our railway is important to, to connect our, our own logistics hubs, like, like our export route between Gauteng and import route and, and Durban. Uh, all of those copper trucks then that comes on our road basically just destroys our road. So I, I think this is wonderful. It's also wonderful for the subcontinent. Uh, we, we want growth in our neighboring economies. It's good for South Africa. So that is good. In terms of global view of transport, that's a shorter route. It's less border crossings. It's the right thing to do. So it's perfect. Prof, thank you for that glass half full approach. Uh, as you say, sometimes you have to look deeper to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But thank you so much for that. Do appreciate it. That was Professor Jan Havenga. He is with the University of Stellenbosch and he's the transport economist there.